Hi, good afternoon to you, Janesh. Uh, uh, well, welcome to our uh, Expert Speak uh, webinar with, uh, with Scriptbox. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out. Uh, Thanks to, for the invite. To the entire uh, people who have uh, been kind enough to dial in. Uh, today we have a really interesting topic. Uh, traditionally, uh, Scriptbox has been uh, creating portfolios for their customers or helping customers create portfolios and mutual funds. But uh, over the last few months and over, over time, obviously, uh, a lot of customers ask about investing in equity directly themselves. Uh, so we thought we'd get in one of the uh, sort of foremost experts in India on equity to share his thoughts. Uh, I won't say much about Janesh. I mean, he's a well-known uh, uh, investor, well-known fund manager in India, uh, probably the youngest, uh, one of the youngest stalwarts uh, in, the, in, the, in the equity industry, been with Axis for uh, over 11 years uh, and now heads up equity for them. Uh, so without much more, I'll talk about the kind of questions we'll ask after Janesh has introduced himself. And also uh, he's shared with us a little bit about Axis and uh, mutual fund and their approach and uh, how they go about investing. Uh, we'll take about 45 minutes uh, or so today. That's what we budgeted. So uh, a few minutes with uh, a little bit about Axis, a little bit about our expert speaker. Uh, then I'll talk, uh, start asking a few questions. Uh, as we go along, uh, once we've done with four or five questions which you had sent through earlier, uh, please keep posting your questions in the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll pick them up from there and during the course of the uh, interaction, we'll try to answer as many as possible. Uh, so thank you once again and over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you Atul, uh, sir. Thank you for this opportunity to talk to uh, Scriptbox and uh, its client there. Uh, so just just I'm I'm sure you would be aware of Axis, but just let me just brush up. Uh, we started in 2009 as as 41st mutual fund, and uh, uh, with uh, last 11 years we were like a startup, and uh, with introduction of uh, differentiated products, differentiated philosophy, uh, in in the otherwise commoditized uh, market. Uh, we have been able to uh, find our fair share of uh, market share and now we are among top 10 uh, mutual fund house in india and uh, pure equity i must i must say that it has been a very good journey uh, and now we are among top four in pure equity aum not taking into account the balance funds and other things so it's been a it's it's been a, a great experience great journey uh, the way markets have rewarded us, the way markets have rewarded our philosophy, and uh, we we don't see any reason why we need to change those aspects uh, 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 over a longer periods of time. Uh, so clearly, uh, and also uh, 2012, uh, we had uh, a joint venture partner which uh, took 25 stake in uh, in in our uh, AMC, which is Schroders of UK. Uh, they are uh, one of the largest asset management company in UK with over 200 years of experience and uh, running around 300 billion pounds of uh, assets under management. And uh, that has really, again, helped us to really leapfrog in some of the thinkings, uh, what we had, uh, uh, what we have uh, learned from them over the last eight years of uh, relationship. And that is further helping us to really see investing uh, very, very differently, how world things, what world things and how trends are moving, how the momentums are uh, being uh, uh, shaping up. So uh, so it's it's a great journey. Uh, we have a total AUM in excess of uh, 1,50,000 crores, 50% uh, being uh, equity, uh, 11 years of uh, history. And uh, some of our schemes are uh, flagship schemes now, and that really uh, is a case study even for us to go back and understand what we have done right, what we have done wrong. And uh, that has been uh, all about access, team, access, uh, house, and, and, and the way we have tried to uh, bring some differentiation in the, in the product portfolio of the investors. Uh, while looking into long-term wealth creation and not looking into near-term NAV uh, rat rates. So this is about access, I would say. Uh, thank, you so to... much. Uh, thank you so much, Janesh. I mean, the shorters one obviously gives a lot of credibility, but I think you guys don't publicize it enough. Uh, obviously, the, the value that it is an interconnected world and uh, the fact that you all benefit and all of us benefit from your learning is, is very powerful. 
so Dinesh, let's get stuck into the, 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 the topic for the evening. Uh, you obviously manage direct equity in the sense that you help people uh, uh, invest in the capital markets uh, through, in the equity space, uh, but through mutual funds. Uh, but given the real buzz, and if you see the numbers of some of these uh, discount brokers over the last uh, six months, uh, it looks like uh, everybody wants to open a DMAT account and start trading. Uh, we ourselves have sort of multiple thoughts around it while it allows you to dip your toe. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody is really qualified or equipped to do it in a systematic manner. So how would you, uh, what would be your opening uh, advice to people who are thinking of uh, doing direct equity on their own? Uh, what, what should they be looking at? Uh, how should they go about it? Sure. Uh, see, I think uh, it's, a, it's a, a phenomenon across the world, what we have seen, uh, especially during COVID times, and not only in India, uh, even in Indonesia, even in US, uh, we have seen people uh, going berserk on uh, uh, opening the DMAT accounts and, and thinking that we know the market very well. And uh, uh, obviously, some would have made uh, money also in that journey, but uh, normally, uh, my advice to uh, investors would be, please don't look at uh, markets like a casino market. Uh, uh, because at, at the end, uh, when things go wrong, uh, the same investors will start uh, talking uh, negative about this market. So I think, I think uh, uh, there is a lot of risk involved in that. Unless and until you are a very informed investor, you have done your uh, work on the company where you are invest, investing, uh, you can invest directly, but otherwise, uh, I, I would genuinely advise, and not because being part of the mutual fund fraternity, I'm saying, but it is, it is, it is a very high risk, high reward game. And uh, when, when, uh, and we have seen during global financial crisis, we have seen in the earlier uh, phases of India where there were there were big scams which came into play in 1990, 91, and in 2000 uh, on on the dot com bubble. I think uh, people lost a significant amount of their wealth because what happens, uh, what at least I have observed is when you start taking small bets, you start making money and then you feel that I know the market and then you start taking bigger bets and uh, some of the brokers allow you to make those bets because of their commission structures uh, they want to earn and ultimately if things go bad, you lose your pants. Uh, so my advice is please look at equity markets from a long-term compounding perspective. People have not understood the importance of compounding, tax-free compounding machine, what uh, 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 some of these schemes uh, or even, even direct stock investments can generate tax-free returns. Uh, so, so, so please uh, don't go by this WhatsApp uh, messages, don't go by this uh, a near-term uh, frenzy that I will buy today, sell tomorrow, and all those stuff. Obviously, you everyone wants a kick in 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 the uh, market, and so five ten percent is okay, but don't go berserk on that. Thank you so much. Uh, that makes tremendous sense. I mean, we always joke uh, if gambling was legal in India. I mean, the dream eleven is starting off, uh, but if gambling was legal in India, you wouldn't have all have all these. Uh, punting and day traders, because the number of times uh, when you tell somebody you, you work in the capital markets like it's a box, uh, the first question you get told is, I've got this lack and I'm, I'm, I'm punting around it and I've made some money. Uh, the, the reality is very few people talk about their losses, right? People typically talk about their gains. Uh, our big worry is that a lot of people who will now trade at this point in time uh, are likely to lose money uh, over a reasonable period of time. And then they lose uh, interest in the category. Right. And they blame, like you said, they blame the category that uh, these capital markets are not for me, uh, which is not true. It's actually capital markets are for you, but uh, you need to invest uh, more holistically. Uh, so that leads to the question, uh, how would you differentiate between, say from an access perspective, uh, investing versus trading, right? So how often do you churn your portfolios? What is your long term view of your value investing portfolios? Uh, since you, I mean, uh, as a head of equity, uh, a lot of your mutual, uh, number of your schemes are really long-term value, right? So uh, can you just explain to our listeners the difference between trading uh, as an approach and uh, investing as an approach? Because fundamentally in our view, they're different things. Sure. See, uh, how we see market is uh, markets are slaves to earnings. 
and earnings are derived by the companies uh, every quarter every year and uh, and and from a longer term point of view and trading is more of a new specific uh, short term uh, uh, play in the market uh, uh, we are not great in that uh, we really uh, have a philosophy and that philosophy is long term investment based on certain very very basic and simple parameters uh, which is uh, corporate governance management pedigree scalability of the business model innovation of that business model and ultimately everything boils down to roe growth and cash flow generation uh, see uh, see fundamentally uh, there has to be some basis right why you are given assigning certain value to the organization and that that value could be a replacement cost value or a buyout value whichever way you may take depending on the horizon what you take whereas on the trading side it is all about near term uh, news flows near term kickers in the market near term noise in the market liquidity flow and which which don't go well from a longer period of time and when as i said when tide turns uh, it it is extremely difficult to exit those market and we have seen in some of the uh small caps and mid caps in uh, earlier uh, time during 2008 9 uh when when those mid caps and small cap corrected uh it was it was very difficult to exit even hnis could not exit even uh and 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 the indian uh, psyche what i have understood is that nobody wants to cut losses everyone wants to make money everyone wants to average it down till till the way it is going down so i think uh, uh trading is a very different culture uh, if you are sitting on the screen daily uh, and that is that is your philosophy of technical analysis or news flows then it is fine but uh, you cannot mix both of them and and my genuine advice would be people who are not part of the market should not even think of doing trading in the market because they are busy in their own work they are busy in their jobs they are busy in their businesses leaving all these if you start uh, Uh, taking calls on the market based on certain uh, whatsapp news and everything you are bound to uh, lose money eventually i would say so i think uh, markets are all about fundamentals markets are all about earnings earnings decides the multiple of the market what price you want to give it to a specific story and 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 uh, that uh, uh, leave it to the professionals who are in the market working for you Thanks, Dinesh. I mean, so the the I mean, I, I remember reading some statistics somewhere that over a three to five year period, people who sort of do this active trading, especially sort of who are not experts. I mean, there are people who manage money very very well, but ninety uh, percent cases are that they they end up losing money. Uh, let alone take the power of compounding, uh, because a lot of trading happens on. My friend told me, or I read a news article, or uh, sort of uh, the fundamentals, like you said. earnings uh, don't really come into those those combinations uh, but that said i mean uh, we owe it to our listeners there are people like you said even if 10% of my money uh, i want to uh, sort of do myself learn uh, invest what are the guardrails you would suggest what would you suggest that uh, what are the things they should look out for uh, because obviously they don't have all the screens they don't have earnings data they don't have the analyst meetings they don't have access to the management so the many things which you have access to and Uh, the models you have and the experience probably is not available to the retail investor, uh, yeah. and they want to do something. And we would don't advise put all your portfolio, but if you are determined to do it yourself, uh, though we say come through Scriptbox, uh, we, we come through us to people like Dinesh and uh, trust us. Right? When you're not well, uh, you don't go to the Google, you don't go to the internet and figure out what medicine to have. You hopefully go to a doctor. Similarly, but still, since you want to self-medicate, what are the guardrails you would suggest uh, people should do? so the best way to uh, start your uh, let's say limited research is to uh, read annual reports i think that is the best way to understand the company if you are really looking to invest even for a 12 month kind of an horizon see for a day to day it doesn't make sense for uh, to uh, do this work but really uh, investor who really wants to learn by himself uh, in terms of investing and uh wants to really understand a sector or wants to understand a company i think the best metric what we really look as a primary research is go to the website of the companies you will get all the details uh, uh you have the annual report go through last 3 4 years annual report 
you will get to know what is the uh, commentary of the management what is their thinking what are their strategies and even you can uh, evaluate a last five years annual report and come to a conclusion that whether that management has executed it and you can always compare that with the price movement and the uh, market cap creation what they have done uh, second is there are various books there are various uh, magazines which keep, keep on uh, uh, coming every week every month and you can have a look at that what are the new trends emerging in the market what what is the momentum in a specific sector why why global world is changing so fast why technology is taking over financials over the world what, what so i think you will have lot of reading material uh, but i think see it becomes very difficult what to read at what point of time so i think to start with you have to uh, first filter yourself what you are really looking for what you want to do and then uh, starting with the annual report i think the annual report is the best best metric which gives you everything about the company and if you really read it carefully you will even get to know some of the negatives what those companies would be doing be it on the governance front on the social front on the environment front esg as a theme has become very very important now companies are forced to come out with sustainability report which will further help you in terms of research uh so my advice would be do simple research don't go overboard uh by doing complex uh, uh thesis i think uh, everything is available on the net it is just that how how much time you can spend doing that research and in terms of uh, so like the question gets asked that uh, yeah i've done my research uh what about any any uh, any guidelines from you on uh p ratios or earnings or because there is there is obviously i know this is a good company uh, so rather than go only by stock tips from friends or by whatsapp messages or uh, sort of reading money control and saying top 5 uh, what are your other uh, sort of suggestions for people uh, looking to invest See, uh, the most important financials what we look at is uh, uh, the return on equity or return on capital employed return on in invested capital the new money which you are investing in terms of capex what kind of returns they are that they are generating and the cash flow generation so i think this covers mota mota your balance sheet cash flows and the pnl part uh, and and uh, if you if you can uh, i would say compare that with your other uh, industry companies the sector averages and if you if if you find out that company is doing much better on growth company is doing much better on the margins uh, uh, on on the roe front and on the cash flow front obviously you will get some basis that this is the company took for because last 5 years this company has been growing at above industry averages delivering higher than industry averages roes and uh, delivering cash flow uh, and and whether that company has is taking effort to Uh, deliver that cash flow to the shareholders in the form of dividends whatever my small dividends it is there so these are the checklist uh, the second checklist is whether that companies are paying taxes if the company is a full tax company i think uh, normally you will feel that the governance part of the company is taken care of because uh, <laughs> uh, 90% of the uh, entrepreneurs want to evade taxes that is what we have seen uh, why our tax revenues are not great Uh, so so all, so tax is tax is the second aspect Sec third is uh, uh, on the business itself what they are doing for the business uh, uh, whether they are really looking at a new uh, innovation in the business be it front end or back end and whether that is helping them to grow in terms of their revenue growth uh, 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 above than the industry averages so some of these things taken together would really give you a basis that ev ebit p price to book roe roic roce and cash flows i think mota mota these are all metrics which will cover the basis of the company and 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 give you a fair picture where this company is heading and uh, on that note dinesh so uh, even if people are sort of looking at it uh, so similarly right now when you you obviously have a large team working for you uh we we obviously at scribbox strongly believe that uh money is best managed by experts uh, rather than sort of punt on your own uh, 
what's the typical process if you could talk through uh, for for you as a mutual fund uh, manager uh, how do you do your screening how do you select how do you reject uh, so if you could just talk through say a, a typical process a day in the life of a fund manager or a day in the week of a, fund a week in the life of a fund manager that will help our people if they want to do this uh, as a full time job what should they do so i think uh, I, i will as i said uh, in my opening comment that uh, you have to uh, first uh, imbibe a philosophy process system to ensure that uh, you know what what you are looking out for uh, so for us uh, it is very simple corporate governance management pedigree uh, growth as a philosophy we don't confuse ourselves between growth and value because we really feel that india is a growth market you have still enough room for growth enough room to take your per capita incomes from 2000 odd levels to 2000 dollars to let's say 5 6000 dollars over a period of next 10 years and uh, there is a huge uh, indian population which is uh, having lot of desires and needs uh, to fulfill so growth as a philosophy we really harp on uh, fourth is uh, again innovation clearly uh, uh, like how script box is innovating the entire uh, change in the business model right obviously when you if you don't uh, 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 implement a technology or innovation in your business someone else will kill you so so what kind of innovations those companies are able to do Uh, to ensure that company is staying ahead of the curve in terms of uh, businesses uh, and last as i said is a uh, financial metrics which is boils down to growth roe uh, cash flow and ultimately what kind of value you are ascribing to a company uh, with a 3 to 5 year horizon so we are uh, uh, we are okay uh, even if the businesses are uh, slightly expensive near term but if there is a room for growth and if that company is really leading that growth uh, and has a potential to become leader in its space uh, we we are okay giving a uh, slightly higher valuation for the governance or for uh, the uh, financial metrics what they have thank you very much that is very so very this is the process and in that process you filter out as many companies the biggest uh, uh, thing in the portfolio is to avoid mistakes right okay the lesser you do mistakes in the portfolio uh, the rest of the portfolio will take care of you over a 3 5 year uh, horizon so the lesser the mistakes you do in the portfolio so you just filter out as many companies which you don't want to research and then concentrate on doing research where you really feel this is this is the company based on the parameters which i spoke about has really uh, room for growth and room for uh, valuation upside Thanks, Janesh. The other question, which obviously, uh, because we are a regulated industry, uh, relatively, uh, you as a mutual fund manager, uh, yeah. you obviously are very heavily regulated in, in your approach, uh, and obviously the investors' interests are very well protected yeah. uh, through SEBI and AMFI. Whereas in the direct equity space, uh, what what is the relative regulation? Uh, how how do you protect investor interests? Uh, because uh, aren't cust aren't investors more Uh, susceptible to uh, to errors and 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 what have you so what are your thoughts around that uh, very difficult to say because uh, it depends on uh, investor to investor where he is putting his buck and whether he understands that uh, risk of that investment or he is just playing blind uh, because uh, someone has given him that tip or some company person has told him that our numbers will be good so i think uh, uh, it, it, individual risk uh, is 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 what individual have to decide what kind of bets he is putting how much money he is uh, putting for that and uh, uh, i mean i i would be surprised even uh, investor understands the risk what he is taking so i think uh, regulation wise it would be difficult uh, uh, to really pinpoint in terms of how investors should look at because we have seen even uh unfortunately brokers also playing a, a, a not a not so good role mm -hmm. uh for uh, the investors and we have seen some of the brokers uh, even uh, uh using uh, investors uh, poa mm -hmm. uh, to to use their to make their own money so i think 
uh, there are various risk i would say there are much much more risk than only price risk for the investors to lose their money uh, uh, directly thank you ram and that that was very useful uh, changing tack a little bit i mean this is obviously a question so thanks a lot for the sort of uh, clarity around uh, the relative risks on doing direct equity uh, people who need to do it uh, need to be very careful need to do their research thoroughly don't depend on tips have a long term view of it if you're investing in direct equity take a 3 year 5 year 7 year view of the company what the prospects are do your research and then think and do what is appropriate be aware of the risks uh, or trust a fund manager i mean uh, and and, and uh, given their track records and given what they have done uh, it will make sense to go down that path we'll change tack a little bit uh, jine uh, a more generic question about where we are in india today right uh, the the classical question being asked is that there is a clear disconnect between uh, what the economy seems to be doing and uh, what the stock market seem to be doing right uh, we ourselves obviously are the benefactors of that and we keep telling our customers that this too shall pass if you have a five year seven year horizon then this is just a blip i mean obviously it'll hurt when you're through it but at the end of it uh, this too shall pass and you'll correct but what are your thoughts i mean how would you what would you be telling your investors at this point in time sure uh, so clearly this covid thing is once in a 100 year kind of an event hope that doesn't come again uh because see frankly we have never seen country going into lockdown we have never seen all the businesses being stopped uh and grounded to halt and uh i think uh, it was an unfortunate event uh, uh hopefully we don't have more lockdowns because uh the kind of uh, gdp loss we had in that 68 days of lockdown was close to 280 to 300 billion dollars and uh, one more this kind of a lockdown will just take india back back 10 years back so i think uh, livelihoods are equally important along with lives uh, uh, this event has happened i think fortunately uh, in last four months the medical fraternity is at least able to understand now the symptoms well and are able to treat people well and hence the recovery rates are very very good which is uh, i i should say no solace but i think uh the best we can do is uh, keep the fatality rates as low as possible and uh, uh and and ensure that uh, the country continues to work uh, uh and grow slowly steadily rather than uh, uh we having a massive second wave third wave which can uh, just disrupt the entire momentum of the economy see uh, so as you rightly said it was a blip nobody thought what will happen and uh that it it and and markets have like a v shape kind of a recovery thanks to global uh, money thanks to global stimulus and also i would say thanks to large fdi money which is came in come which has come in some of the big enterprises i think that has really changed the mood of the uh, uh market i would say uh so i think uh, just imagine if this covid would have happened when oil was at 100 True. I think India would have collapsed, big time. But fortunately for us, our forex reserves are strong. Our rupee is uh, stable. Uh, oil is at forty, forty-two dollars, which is helping inflation under control. And 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 also the monsoons were good, and the rural economy was continuing to do well. So I think there are some positives, there are some negatives, and hence I think market. I would say uh, understood that it is going to be. Uh, not a v shape recovery but they understood that long term opportunity is very very good so if you have uh, uh, some of the best of the best blue chips available at 30 40% discount and it is just a six month kind of a pain then it was a great opportunity to buy so everyone you, like us everyone would, if they have money they would have bought means if let's say for example i'm saying if hdfc bank is available at 40% discount to its fair value why i would not go and buy because i know that this company has been in existence for last 20 25 years and has seen many events like this right obviously this was a one of its kind event uh, normally those events don't reoccur and uh, that was a great opportunity to buy at 800 900 bucks uh, uh, when 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 the markets fish, uh, sell off uh, sharply likewise if you see a lot of qip has been raised by many of the companies and uh, that is really giving strength to some of the companies which are listed and uh, 
and, and that is what is keeping markets alive that uh, market is telling you something that we know the near term fi21 is a washout year but if your policies are correct if government get gets it act together into various reforms what they are doing i think next 3 4 years can be bumper year for us if if all goes well uh, and this is coming from uh, the uh, countries like taiwan vietnam china korea who have been able to manage this crisis within 3 month of the uh, uh, of that crisis and they are able to run their economy in a much better manner the health crisis if you really see the infection rates have just come down dramatically in asia except for india if you see taiwan it is a zero death uh, a phenomenal uh, a way to manage the economy so i think foreigners are taking that view that if china vietnam uh, indonesia korea and taiwan is able to contain this crisis well at some point even india will be in a better zone and uh, there is huge population there is huge uh, propensity to grow there is huge desire so long term story remains intact unless we have second wave third wave and we just and we are like africa we just write off uh, the the foreigners just write it off but that doesn't look to be the case the amount of fdi which has come in i think there is really very long term money ready to park uh, for a near term uh for a long term uh taking into account near term pay thank you jinesh uh so we've got a couple of more questions and then uh, we'll uh, wrap up uh, so one is around sort of linked to this uh, given the complexity given the various risks uh, we always talk a lot about diversification right talk about asset allocation we talk about diversification uh, how would the, and obviously mutual funds are a, a, a great way to do doing that Uh, how does that compare to somebody who is trying to do direct equity right so uh, how, how would you what would be your advice what would be your view on that uh, the relative diversification uh, in, in a mutual fund you as a fund manager versus uh, somebody trying to do direct equity on their own see i think again it depends on the uh, education level, levels of that investor if he is really able to understand all the asset classes all the sectors and he knows he is in this game day in day out then it is fine but again a, 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 a individual who is not into this uh, market for a on on a day to day basis i think it is going to be difficult it is better to go to the advisors like script box or uh, uh, and and then route your money to more safer uh, 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 i would say investment uh, 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 schemes or uh, mutual fund houses so that who knows i think it is all about uh, knowing more in detail if you know better then fine you can do it directly but if you don't know then why break your head please concentrate on your business please concentrate on your jobs and leave it to uh, people like script box and us to help you out in this journey uh, because uh, at the end of the day the level of uh, understanding you need for the various companies various sectors various asset classes is going to be difficult right at the end of the day and it is a 10 15 year journey it is not going to happen in one year so it depends on how much time you want to really uh, spend on 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 that also uh, there are new emerging themes uh, which uh, let's say setting uh, uh, in the investment world uh, talking to stroders Uh, or some other people uh, we really get to know much faster i would say let's say for example in why in indian investors cannot go abroad now in terms of investment i think it's a great opportunity right so uh, so those are the trends which uh, we would be in a better position to know than an individual investor and by the time it percolates down to an individual investor he might the the moment, the, the first mover advantage Uh, would have gone gone so I, then it becomes a me too kind of an investment that five friends are investing so i will also invest so it is like during during our uh, education days panch jan ca kar rahe hai to main bhi kar leta hu type so <laughs> so i think uh, uh, leave it to the professionals uh, leave it to me for uh, when you are sick you go to doctor right you don't try to treat yourself so it is like uh, 
leave it to the professionals they will uh, uh, they will do as best diversification as possible see excessive diversification is also not good so 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 the knowledge or uh, the learnings what we have uh, as an organization anyone has will really help us to uh, manage your risk in a much much better manner as compared to uh, an individual taking so much pain in diversification and in taking risk Uh, thank you very much, Janesh. I mean, that uh, probably answers most of the questions. To summarize, uh, this is an expert game. Uh, knowledge is very important. Uh, research is very important. Uh, long-term understanding of long-term implications, uh, short-term pricing. Uh, so while absolutely, uh, if you feel you're informed and uh, you can do this on your own, uh, please, but uh, a, a prudent approach uh, would be to come to the professionals. And this is not because we are in the business. This is what we'll tell ourselves. I mean, uh, even I, as uh, somebody who uh, who is the CEO and founder of a, of a, from somebody in the capital markets, trust some other professionals as fund managers. So we trust people like Janesh. Uh, so our our uh, suggestion is that while it is exciting and interesting to be in direct equity, uh, it also makes sense to look at mutual funds as part of your overall portfolio and your asset allocation. Uh, and thank you once again, Janesh, for your time. Uh, your insights were Pleasure. very very valuable. Pleasure. Thanks for the invite. And, uh, and we look forward to keeping in touch and having you back again as an expert as we move forward. So thank you for looking after the money of our customers. And thank you once again. Thank you, everybody who's dialed in. Uh, have a great long weekend. Uh, hope you get to relax uh, and spend some more time with the, with the family. Take care and uh, keep invested. This too shall pass. Stay safe. Stay invested. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully before investing.